Welcome to the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. I'm Deborah Darris, your host and top Latina peak performance speaker. Each week, you will learn from top experts in the speaking industry, insider secrets of what works and what doesn't, so that you can monetize your expertise. My intention is to be your speaking coach, to provide you with resources and experts that have done it before you so that you can get your message out into the world faster and easier. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. This is your host, Deborah Darris, Latina Peak Performance Keynote Speaker, and I am dedicated to giving you the best experts, the most inspirational and transformational speakers to help you get your speaking career kick-started so that you don't have to learn from all of the challenges and all of the mistakes and all of the money I spent to get my career started. You're going to be able to rise to the top faster and easier because you are going to learn from the mistakes of others and the successes of others. And we have an amazing guest today. She's someone that has been on my radar for many years. People have been telling me, you have to know this woman. This woman is amazing. She's inspirational. And I am so grateful that she could be with us today. And you are going to love hearing about her because listen, after being laid off, five times within a five-year period, and surviving a life-threatening medical condition, Dupe Alaru tapped into her greatest superpower, an unwavering ability to conquer adversity. She forged her own professional path over the past decade, combining her passion for speaking and content creation to become a successful serial entrepreneur. And she is going to talk to us because now she is a recognized influencer. She is a motivational influencer, a leading authority for curriculum course development. And she works with school districts, government agencies, and entrepreneurs all across the country. And she is here to share her light with you. Please help me welcome Dupe Alavru. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you for that amazing introduction. You like my um, clapping machine? I do. I, do I love that. <laughs> it, it, is, it is all of the people that are driving in their car, or listening on the treadmill, that their ears are going up. Remember Scooby-Doo and Shaggy? Like, huh? Yes. It's like, wow, who is this? <laughs> And I know I left many, many things off your very impressive and long bio, um, but I, I want people to know, I mean, those are some of your accomplishments and your stories, but who are you? What is it that makes you who you are so that people can understand where you're coming from? Yeah, sure. I mean, first and foremost, I like to tell people I'm a woman of God. My mm. faith is very important to me. And so without God, I wouldn't be who I am. And with that being said, I am a child of four. You know, I have three other siblings. I was born from immigrant parents. My parents are Nigerian. They came to this country in the 60s and 70s. And I pretty much learned a lot from them. You know what I mean? Like they were very hardworking. They still are. So I think everything about who I am today really stems from not only my faith, but from my family. Yeah, and I'm so glad that you said that because I feel that my connection and having God as my literal CEO is the secret sauce in my speaking because I know people, you know, I do marketing consultant people say, oh, well, you know, you're able to get this lucrative speaking engagement because you're like a marketing wizard or this because you're a social media goddess. I'm like, actually, (laughs) Uh, my real secret sauce is my quiet time, just listening, hearing, and asking for divine guidance. Because when I first started my career in speaking, I had no idea how to market it. I really didn't. And if it wasn't for me listening and asking and taking inspired action, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And so I love that you're also a faith-based business and that you allow that to lead and guide you. So how did you get started in the wacky and crazy world of speaking? <laughs> I, we just talked about this before we went live. Um, 
to be honest, you know, I was just a little bit of context so people understand. I was a former teacher. So I taught for four years inside the classroom, was laid off all four years in a row. After that, I left classroom teaching, got a job as an education reporter for the Beverly Hills Courier newspaper, built the education section from the ground up, and then I was laid off again. So that was five layoffs within a five-year period. And like you mentioned, and dealing with a life-threatening condition at that time. So you know how it is when you're in a place where you're just like, okay, God, what, what's next? Like, what do you want from me? He told me, I, I heard, you know, someone talking to me like, you are meant to be your own boss. So that's when I started my education company. I own a K-12 education company in Long Beach. We provide in-home and on-site tutoring services. And that's really the start, I would say, to my speaking. And the reason why I say that is because now as a business owner, I was more behind the scenes. I was doing a lot of the consultations. I was pitching to school districts. You know, I was talking to educators, administrators, and I got comfortable, I would say. I got really comfortable um, speaking in front of, you know, boards and things of that sort. And I think even my background in teaching. So when people always ask me, you know, you speak so well and fluid mm -hmm. and, you know, you have a great voice. Like people always say that you have a great voice. I never understood that. And sure, it could be my background in education. I have a master's degree in two teaching credentials. I really think classroom teaching is where I really began. And then becoming an entrepreneur, it really strengthened my speaking skills. Now, when it comes to professionally speaking, I have to give it up to the app Periscope. Like I mentioned to you earlier, I started on Periscope in 2014. Um, just doing a morning motivation show Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. And I grew an audience pretty quickly. I think I reached like 5,000 followers in like a month. And then- Wow, like, yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. It was it was a pretty big growth in a few, few months. And then I ended up going to Periscope Summit. And I realized at that point, wow, I really want to do this. Now, this was in 2015-ish. But, you know, sometimes you, you allow fear. <laughs> you start to see what everyone's doing. And right. I, I was like, can I really do this? Because keep in mind, I now had a brick and mortar company. I built a six-figure business. I wasn't in the position where I wanted to leave something that I finally hit a peak to go try another career, right? Right. So I ended up kind of doing what most people do is just provide content online on, on YouTube, making videos. Instagram, but you know, 27, 2018, January of this year was the year that I was like, you know what, I I'm going at it full time. I don't care if I have to shut down my education company, this is what I need to do. And so far I've done that. Oh my God. I wonder if we met at the Periscope conference. Was it the I one in San Francisco or New York? Yes, it was I San Francisco. Cause I was at both. I, oh, I spoke at the one in New York. And it was so crazy because we, I was doing the meditation along with Grace. Remember Grace, oh, the hypnosis? Yes, yes. So I was on the panel speaking, but unfortunately, or fortunately, the Pope and Beyonce were in town. <laughs> and so because they were in town, they closed off the street so people couldn't get to our engagement. It was crazy. So. Oh, my God. I remember that weekend was insane. It was bananas. There's a lot going on that weekend for sure. <laughs> And it, do you find the same? Because I also had a great following. I was doing it every single day, 11, yeah. 11, aligned with the di divine scope of Deb. Used to yeah. watch Scopra. Remember Nicole Scopra? Yes. Come on. I, love um, I love that girl. And I have so many friends, even now, Danny Beck from Periscope, like and clients from Periscope. It's so amazing. But I, I would never think about doing a Facebook Live every day. Like that would seem right. like. Periscope was like the, like. There's something about Periscope that Facebook Live, Instagram Live, nothing else can bring. Oh, uh, okay. It was like a community. It, was it a really family. was. We knew, it was like, you knew the person on the other end, even though you've never met them. Like, I remember you knew, you were at Periscope Summit, walking in the room, and everybody's like, Japan, running up to you. Exactly. And you've never met them before, but you did know them. And right. Till this day, I have a lot of great friends that I've met on social media. But I've never even met in person, but I consider them my, like some of my greatest friends. Yeah. So. That was really a shame about Periscope, but I blame Facebook I for killing them. <laughs> we blame Facebook for killing most platforms. Yeah, right. <laughs>
Wow. So you were so courageous to to quit your day, not quit your day job, but like really commit 100% mm-hmm. to speaking. Mm-hmm. And so, and obviously, and one of the things that you had going for you, you know, being a teacher, that's like constant training and practice to cultivate your great speaking skills. And then being an entrepreneur, another asset that you had, because what people don't realize is that running a speaking business keyword business is 80% business, maybe even 90% business and 10% speaking. Speaking is the smallest part. Would you agree? I would a hundred percent agree. And I was telling my friend that the other day, I was like, it's a lot harder. And I knew it was going to be this difficult. And that's why I thought about it as far as like, okay, are you ready to do this? Because it's a grind. It's a hustle. You know what I mean? And I'm sure we'll talk about how you get booked and things like that. But it's really about understanding how to position yourself and market yourself and gain visibility because speaking is all about visibility. If the perceived value is that you are someone of importance, if you have something to share, your story or your expertise in a certain skill set, then you will be booked, right? But if people mm-hmm. don't know who you are and what you have to offer and how you can be of service to them, no matter how great of a speaker you are, you won't get booked. And so the reason why, like you said, it's 80% business is because you really have to understand how to market yourself because you are your brand. You're the personal brand. Exactly. And it's so true because I know very talented professors and educators and they're, you know, they've done TED Talks. They're some of the best speakers I know, but they're not out there as a professional speaking, not because they don't know the skill of speaking. It's because they don't know the skill of marketing. So let's jump right into it. How can people... Um, how can experts, I don't want to say people, these experts that are listening to this show more effectively market and brand themselves to get booked? Yeah. So, I mean, I honestly, I'm still new to the game. Like I said, I started speaking full time in January. It hasn't been a year. However, I've booked speaking engagements every month throughout the year. I've had about four keynotes this year, which I'm very proud of. And Awesome. And it's all come from um, social media. I've spoken on many panels. I've spoken at many events. But for me, having a, getting booked for a keynote is, is very big. I wasn't expecting to do that my first year. <laughs> right? And so, and- I mean, you're the headliner when you're, you're the keynote. Yes, you're yeah. carrying the conference. It's a yes. big, big, big deal. It's and big it's big much big more big money, big. like more right. zeros, my right. friends. <laughs> if you don't know, and it's, it's more time as far as like pre- preparation. Right. And yes, even when I was coaching, I had a women's coaching group that, um, you know, we we're meeting every Sundays and one of our themes was speaking. And I was telling them in a sense of a 60 minute keynote. And one of my participants had to remind me, Oh, well, what if you're just going to speak for 10 minutes or 20? I was like, Oh, right. There's other, there's other, you know, elements to it. Right. But if you can prepare for that 60, then the 45, the 30, the 20, and the 10, it's going to be nothing, right? Exactly. And so I always prepare for like the big game, right? So for me, um, you know, marketing all came from social media. I have all my bookings. I think I've booked probably maybe over 15. That may be small for some people, but for me, being a two-time business owner, I own two businesses and just as busy as I am, that was a lot for me my first year. Um, But it all came from social media, the content that I post. So people see my videos every day. People see the content that I post on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, and that's where the majority of my bookings came from. Now, some of the other bookings came from events. I'm just an attendee at an event. I see someone, connect, give them my card. They see what I post on social media, and then they reach out and say, oh my goodness, I didn't know you're a speaker too. Like, I love your content. I would like for you to speak at my next event. So really, social media can be great leverage if you are a content creator. So I would assume most speakers are also coaches or, you know, authors and we do other things, right? And so you have to really be consistent with the content that you provide your audience because for me personally, that's how a lot of brand collaborations are coming about and a lot of speaking engagements as well. Oh my God, I have so many questions for you. I love that. I should be taking notes. I hope you guys are taking notes on this. You you are a great speaker. You have so much content in such a short period of time. So one of the things that you were talking about is that you are really creating a lifestyle 
mm -hmm. uh, speaking career based on what works for you. And I think uh, speakers that are new need to realize this because most people aren't going to do only speaking. You're going to have consulting or coaching or whatever other business that you're doing. So you can decide, you know, I want to do one or two speaking engagements a month or one every, I have a client that I coach that's doing one every other month, but he's wow. getting 10,000 for them. So, wow. you know, it's really, really your call. You mm -hmm. create your career the way you want it, but it's so important that you are consistent with your content because those meeting planners are going to pick the people that are on the top of their mind. Yep. And if you are consistently posting, then they're going to see you. So is there one platform that you find that books, that books you more than other platforms? Um, I would say Instagram and Facebook. It's kind of hard between the two because they're so similar. I think a lot of my following on Facebook are on Instagram. But if I had to choose one, gosh, that's hard. I get a lot of brand collabs on Instagram. Facebook, I would probably say I get the most bookings because of my network. Because I, I, I'm, I'm in a speaker's network, right? I know a lot of um, speakers who are at the top of their game, right? We'll call them A-list speakers. <laughs> so I'm connected with a lot of A-list speakers, a lot of B-list and C-list speakers, right? So I think getting invited to a lot of these elite or VIP events, masterminds, going to a lot of these conferences, like in a few weeks, I'll be going to a conference where Les Brown is speaking. I think just putting myself in those environments, I meet more and more speakers and a lot of these speakers throw their own events. And so that's how I get put on panels or on the stage. And then it just kind of, you know, dominoes, right? It's like a domino effect, right? So I, I think the best thing that speakers can do for themselves is to attend events on a consistent basis. And I attend at mm. least one to two events per month. I love that. So it's not just the online presence. Right. It's actually getting out of your office yep. and finding events and it's income producing activity, you know, right. finding a, it's not just wasting your time get, collecting business cards right. and, and it's really creating relationships, like yeah. you said, with key people that can refer you. But then one of the things that I talk about almost in every podcast, it's, it's our responsibility to really follow up. Mm -hmm. One of my podcast guests said the fortune is in the follow up. Do you have a system for following up with people? You know what, if someone reaches out to me and says, yes, I would love for you to speak in an event, I, I have like an Excel sheet, like in Google Docs or what do they call it? Google yeah, Drive. Google Drive. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah Google Sheets. And what I do is I will put the event name, the date, when the event's going to be held. And then, you know, I have like the different columns and I keep track. I keep track of all the events that I've spoken at as well. And so, um, to be honest, I have not, and I, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, I have not yet gotten into reaching out to events to ask them for me to speak at their event. I, I haven't been there yet. When I said, I can, this is how God works. It's the reason why I took full throttle, like I was like, I am done, is because I had two life-threatening conditions in the last 10 years. I've had two major surgeries, 39 tumors removed in the last- Oh my God. Years. When I had my last surgery in October, the end of October, a week later, you know, after they removed 22 tumors that time, I was literally at an Eric Thomas's event. So if you're a speaker, you probably- Oh yeah, Thomas. I know Eric Thomas. So yeah, so when I went to his event, I was super motivated and inspired by Inky Johnson and a lot of the speakers there that I was like, I can do that. Like, I know this is what I was born to do. I need to just do it. And the whole event was called Stay Ready. So Eric talked about if you're ready, if you're prepared, then the doors will begin to open. But if you're actually scared to get on stage, it's because you're not prepared. And at that time, I was a little scared because I wasn't prepared. The moment I figured out my signature keynote, I kid you not, a couple of weeks later, I went to another event. That was the first time someone asked me to be the keynote speaker for their event. Because I started- Wow. And so it just kind of spiraled and things just began to happen really fast to where I look back and I'm like, wow, a year has already passed. And luckily for me, I've been consistent, but I haven't done that work where, you know, a lot of speakers are building funnels and they're reaching out to events. Like that's what I plan on doing in 2019. So I just want to tell everyone, start at your own pace. You know, it's, there's, every speaker is going to tell you what you should be doing and what you need to do. I always go with my gut and what feels right for me. 
Me too. Oh my gosh. I love that you said that because what you're doing is you're taking a lot of pressure off because people yes. hear people and they're like, oh my God, I'm scared. I'm going to have to cold call or I'm scared. I'm going to have to go on Facebook live every day or whatever. Do what feels right for you. That's the, your intuition, your intuitive guidance system. If you don't want to do this style, do another style, take exactly. what you like and leave the rest. Right. right. And people are going to always have their opinion. This is what I learned. I, I have, because of my relationship with God and like the Holy Spirit, like I can feel when something is not right. There's so much advice that people have given me that they were 100% correct. It might not have been the advice that I needed at that moment, but it was advice that I kind of put in my back pocket and I use later on. But a lot of people are going to tell you, oh, you can't do multiple things or don't spread yourself too thin. If I had went with that advice, I would not be where I'm at. I was like, no, I'm great at speaking and I'm great at curriculum development and course right. development, right? Because when you're beginning to speak, it's hard to book engagement, especially paid engagements on a consistent basis. So you do need something else where you're going to be making your money. You get what I'm saying? Right. And so a lot of times, you know, people will always tell you, you know, focus on one thing, master that, and then move on to the next. But you always have to just go with what feels right to you because not one path is going to be the same. And also, as, as professional speakers, we are really infopreneurs. Yes. And my, my guru of infopreneurship when I was young was Brian Tracy. I used to listen to tapes oh, of Brian him. Tracy. And he had books and tapes and all these things. So <laughs> it's like all different forms of sharing our expertise. So exactly. it's just like this podcast is like a form of sharing my expertise. So, wow, I love it. I love your style. And one of the things you said that I want to have everyone highlight and underline that is the most important thing that I wish I would have done when I first started is listen to what she said. She keeps an Excel spreadsheet of everywhere she spoke. And why is that so important? Because the people that have heard you speak, that have not just heard you, that have hired you, that have paid you to speak are the best people to go back to and say, oh, by the way, I have a new program on this topic. Would you like to bring me back? I've been back to places sometimes four times, but right. if you don't have them in an organized Excel spreadsheet, you're, it's how are you going to find them? How are you going to be able to go back? It's so much easier to develop new business from old business. It's like basic marketing 101, but as experts, depending on our field, we may not know that very, very important piece. So that's, that was such a great idea. That was amazing. So how did you know how much to charge when you first started? Um, I went with my gut. I did take a class. Um, I think his name is, gosh, I don't want to get his name wrong. Grant Baldwin. I think that's his name or Grant. I know his first name is Grant. I believe it's Grant Baldwin. I took like this free webinar. And that's another thing you guys like a lot of people say like, oh, I don't have the money to hire a coach. I listen, Google university. There's so much information on Google. <laughs> free. Like there's no excuse at this point when people give me excuses, I'm just like, you're not ready because your mindset set is not there. Right? Like I started from zero. Everybody starts from zero. So for people to say, oh, I don't have this and that is just an excuse. Like Tony Robbins says, you must be resource resourceful, right? Using the resources that you do have to get where you need to get to. So then that you can start to climb, right? And then you can start to pay for things. So um, if you're on Instagram or social media, there's always free webinars. And sure, that's they're going to upsell you at the end. We all know that, right? That's the whole point of a webinar. But if you go on there, there's a lot of great people like Grant Baldwin, I believe that's his name, who gives great information. And so I remember taking his class months before my surgery. It was like, it was maybe a few months prior to that. And he said, in order to get started as a speaker, you need a few things. Number one, you need your video reel. So he said, grab all footage of you speaking ever, right? And put it together like in some reel, right? So he said, people are going to want to see that. Then he said, you want your website and you want your website to be designed as you, a speaker. And then he goes over other things. I think he might have mentioned a one sheet and, and, and then he mentioned pricing. And within the pricing, he said, there's different categories. You can be a speaker in the K-12 sector, which I started. Me having an education company, being a former teacher, I've been speaking in front of students. I have um, curriculums that's funded and implemented within our local school districts. So I go into my high schools all the time and speak to the kids or the middle schools, do professional development for teachers and things like that. So in the education sector, that's something I've always done. I'm used to that, right? 
So I took all my footage from all the schools that I would speak at, and that's where I started. Um, and then I built my website and just little things like that. So when people find you on social media, they're going to go directly to your website. If your website doesn't match your branding as a speaker, then you could lose out on opportunities. And I think that was the, the thing that helped me. I think me having my website up prior to people reaching out is what solidified me as, I guess, quote unquote, legit, right? <laughs> it's, so, it's basically social proof because, exactly. I mean, that and LinkedIn, I will have people go to LinkedIn even before my website just yeah. to check my credentials and make sure yeah. I'm legit. Right. But without that, I mean, every single podcast I've done, they mm-hmm. say, have a scissor reel, have a website, be, right. give good content. I mean, you right. have to. Right. Right. Oh, something else that I would like to say, Deborah, is someone told me, you probably know her. Um, well, I'm at Amber Aziza. Do you know Amber Aziza from Periscope? I, sure yes, you know yes, yes. She's yeah, so yeah. beautiful. Yes, yes I do. Yeah. I do okay. know her. She's so gorgeous. She's, she said the most important thing is YouTube, which I, I totally agree. If you do not have videos of you speaking on YouTube, that can really hurt you. Right now, to me personally, I'm going to be honest, I don't have a one sheet. I've been booked multiple times without a one sheet. My one sheet is my social proof. If you go on Instagram, that's my one sheet. I have hundreds of videos of me speaking every day, right? If you go on YouTube, I have all my keynotes up. I have all my videos. People will Google you. And if people Google you and if you click on video or images and you have no videos that pop up in Google, that's a problem. And a lot of companies these days are using Google more than even websites or not Google, YouTube, more than websites and even you sending them a one sheet. So a one sheet's great, but it reminds me of the old days, like a resume. People can lie all day long on a resume. Right. I want, (laughs) I need proof that what you say on your resume is who you are. And the only way to do that is if they actually see you live on stage or they actually see you creating content through video um, videos and things like that. So I think that's more important than a one sheet. Oh my goodness. I want to like, I can't wait to play this podcast for all my coaching (laughs) clients because they need to hear it from somebody besides me because it's like what you said is you can't say and market yourself as a speaker if there's no evidence of you on video, Yep. not just on text, because if you were a writer, yeah, text would be good, but you're a speaker. You need to be speaking, you need to be heard, Mm -hmm. you need to be felt. When you think about how people make decisions in sales, it's visually, auditory, kinesthetically. So your speaking gets that point across. So, oh, I'm so excited. I just subscribed to your YouTube channel. (laughs) I actually saw the notification pop up. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, when I promote this podcast, I can share your sizzle reel and all of that. So can we talk about the sizzle reel for a moment? Because I've had multiple, I mean, I've been speaking for a long time, like 16 years. So my first, my first sizzle reel was a VHS tape. And back in the days, because I was like 2002 that I was in the National Speakers Association, Uh we used to mail the tapes to bureaus <laughs> and it was so expensive it was, so when and then bef- then after that there was like cds and then there were video cards the fact that everything's now on youtube right. is amazing i got my biggest client ever verizon from a youtube video they hired wow. me for a contract without ever seeing me speak so for me i agree with you that mm-hmm. youtube because yep. google owns the internet and yep. google owns youtube is your most important place to put content. Yes. Um, and it's so important to also optimize those videos on your YouTube channel. Exactly. Exactly. I need to be better with YouTube, but what I do is I kind of use YouTube as my, um, bolt. Like every time I have created a video, I will put it on there because I know once you explode on one platform, guess what? Everybody's going to go to the next platform, start following you. Right. So you don't want to ever start from scratch. You always want to keep on putting stuff. I make sure to put, um, post content on LinkedIn and Twitter on a daily basis. And people tell you, don't spread yourself. Like have your main platform. My main platform is IG. I actually just reached 15,000 followers today, which was super exciting. Ooh la la. Congratulations. But even though I post like that's my platform, I still make sure to repurpose that content for Twitter, for LinkedIn, for Facebook, you know, because I still need my audience to know like, hello, I'm still here. You know what I mean? Because I still need to grow those platforms. So, and you can't, you never know. One platform can be great one moment and then it can drop the next. Look at what happened to Snapchat. 
So you exactly. really got to be mindful of um, the ones that you know will be staying. And I can tell you right now, LinkedIn, so many people are sleeping on it. It's, it's true. Insane. It is growing like crazy, especially with video content. And that can really get you some booking. So I would say jump on there. Exactly. I, I had a podcast a couple of weeks ago, just completely on LinkedIn for speakers uh -huh. because I had been sleeping on it myself. And then I booked a beautiful speaking engagement at this Margaritaville beach resort. I was like, I need to be posting every single day of my life on LinkedIn. <laughs> yes. So one, one of the things that's unique about you that uh, not a lot of my guests have been is you are also considered an influencer. You know, you have 15,000 people on your Instagram, you're getting brand endorsements meaning you're getting paid to post or paid for things how would what would you recommend for someone that's new to social media how do you build a following how do you become an influencer because you're going to be more valuable as a speaker if you already have a following people are yes. going to want to book you more yeah what advice do you have you know what I've only been at it for two years consistent. So you know I'm not I, I don't know everything but as I'm growing I've grown quite fast in the last few months. So just in July alone, I had 7,000 followers. So in the last few months, I've grown over 7,000 followers. And a lot of that was um, a video that kind of went really, really mini viral. I wouldn't even consider it viral because, you know, viral is considered like 5 million plus, right? But I reached 100,000 views on a video in like a few weeks. And so with that being said, I would say that that's how you, you gain the momentum is that the consistency, you have to be consistent with the content, but right now on Instagram, because it's so saturated and I'm going to be talking about Instagram a lot because it is the still number one platform right now for video content. If you're paying attention, especially to people like Gary V, Jess Hilarious, like Jess Hilarious started as a comedian on Instagram just a couple of years ago. She has over, 5 million followers. She has a show on Fox television. <laughs> like, right? so, like she has like all this stuff and it's all because of IG. And there's many people that landed television shows and that the career took off because of Instagram. And it was all because of consistency, knowing exactly who their audience was. And even you would notice all celebrities too, they're boosting their videos and their posts. And so for so long, I heard Gary V say this and I kind of ignored him. And finally I was like, I have to listen. Like I have to listen to what he's doing, not what he's actually saying. So I boosted a post and I remember it was July 4th while everybody else was partying. I boosted a video, $30, right? And literally it reached over a hundred thousand views. And that what? Yeah, I got over, I think I got, I forgot, was it 4,000, 4,000 followers in like less than a month. Wait insane. a minute. So yeah. on, hold on, I got to back you up here because I've never <laughs> done, I've never done a boost on Instagram. I've done it on Facebook. Uh huh. Can you customize the audience or is it just, yeah. they just send it out? Oh, yeah. you can. I actually have a course. I did a Facebook live and I made like a little mini course on there. Um, it's like on my website for like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something, but. Oh, everybody buy it. <laughs> give them, give them your website. It's um, dupayalaroo.com forward slash shop. You guys will be able to find it. It says how I grew um, 4,000 followers in like four weeks on Instagram. You'll be able to see it. But it was insane. And I kid you not, you guys, in those four weeks, I spent less than $120, $30 a week. Okay, that's it. $5 a day. And I got an extra 4,000 followers, loyal followers who like, if I don't post a day, they're like in my DMs, like what happened to you, right? And so the thing, the, the reason why I like Instagram is because you start a little bit smaller, Facebook analytics and boosting posts, you have so much more to work with. It's a lot more complicated. I haven't mastered that. But when you know your audience on IG, you know exactly what areas you want to boost. You know um, the keywords, right? So if you're a speaker, I like to put, you don't want to be too cliche like motivation, but I'll put Gary Vaynerchuk or certain people's names, uh, in interest, right? And then, so you kind of get used to, you'll see, and it'll show you on Instagram, it'll show you with this amount of money, how many people can I reach? I right. never, I never boost it if it doesn't reach at least 15,000 people for that 300 or for that $30. You hear mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If it says right. the boost is going to be around 5,000, that's not enough because I've gotten used to seeing what $30 can get me. It got me over 7,000 followers, right? And so you got, you have to really play around with it. 
But I kid you not, if I didn't take that leap of faith on that July 4th, this past July 4th, I wouldn't be where I'm at as far as that following. It's your Independence Day, girl. <laughs> Uh, you, I just have to disclosure. Um, Dupe looks like a supermodel, so results may vary. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you, I can't with you. I'm hysterical. <laughs> no, but one of the things that I love about your Instagram, I'm following you now, so you can have 15,001, um, is it's very clean and well organized. So that also really helps. It's, you're not, you're very thoughtful, not, not thoughtful, intentional about your posting, which is really so important. And I highly recommend everyone take your class, your course. It's dubealaru.com slash shop, $20, learn and, and, and apply. I mean, it's in it. And one of the key things that people don't understand about social media, it's course correcting. You have to yeah. try things and get feedback. It's not like you're failing at something. It's you're getting feedback on it and then you change your strategy and then you try something else until you hit it. Yep. Yep. It's like really, they call it AB testing. You know what yes. I mean? Like you always mm -hmm. have to like test and that's what I did. And it's funny because this is what we usually do. We always say, um, we always say, oh, Facebook ads don't work. Instagram sponsored ads don't work. No, mm -hmm. it works. It just didn't work for you because you haven't done it. You haven't figured out a way to do it correctly yet. We've all done that. I used to say that. Right. Like, oh, Facebook ads doesn't work. I know people who've made millions off of like Facebook ads, right? So we have to get out of the, the habit of saying something doesn't work just because we haven't figured out how to make it work for us. You have yes. to be consistent and that's what's key is to try it different ways. And you are going to lose some money sometimes, but I kid you not, when you hit the point where you're like, yes, it finally worked, it will be tenfold, right? You will make up that loss tenfold if you are consistent. Exactly. Invest in yourself. Yes. And, and one of the things that you're also doing that's really important is you're giving people appetizers of your content, what you would deliver on the stage, correct? Yeah. Yeah. In those videos. Mm -hmm. So like if you go to the food court at the mall, they're not going to say, buy a whole chicken rice and bean lunch. <laughs> they're going to say, here's a piece of chicken on a toothpick, right? And yeah. that's what you're doing with your one minute video on Instagram. You're right. giving people a piece of what they would get in this 45 minute keynote. Try before you buy Pink Spoon Marketing 101 mm -hmm. so that they know what you're going to deliver. Because if they're going to invest five, seventy five hundred, ten thousand, twenty thousand on hiring you, they want to make sure that you're going to give them a return on investment. And that's what these videos on your Instagram are doing. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I, I really do. I love, um, you know, putting out video content, you know, that's just that because everybody does, I guess everybody creates content in a different capacity, right? So you might do written word. The next person might be really great at video. The next person might be great at audio. Not everyone's going to be great at video. And so you have to really find what works for you. And I think that's key. I think a lot of people, because video does, is very great. People like to see you, right? When they have that, when you have that likability factor and you're able to build trust, that's when people start to buy into you, right? And exactly. so, um, but you have to make sure that that is your style because Sometimes I see people do videos and it's, it's, I'm sorry. It's, 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 what do you call it? Like nail biting. Just say whack. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> say it girl. You I can say it. To be nice. <laughs> it's, it's like I get like, I'm cringing because I can see that they're uncomfortable, but they're right. themselves to do it because they right. see what other people are doing and right. people come up to me all the time or DM me. I want to be like you. I want to do my videos like you. Listen, you'll never do your videos like me because you're you. I can make right. videos like nobody else and I don't try to. And that's what, what the reason why I have been successful is because I've always been about me. I don't care what anybody else is doing. Great for you if you're doing a good job. I might right. watch and see, okay, how can I tweak what they're doing and make it my own? But if you are not able to, I guess, build your own brand in your own way, then you'll always find yourself time trying to keep up with the people that you admire and look up to, right? So right. I think just try to figure out, be creative with it. It doesn't always have to be video. I know a lot of people that do sound, they put their podcast on um, Instagram, they'll have a background and then they'll, they'll just be talking over the background. Right. And so you just have to understand what it is that you're great at. And how are you coming up with the topics, like with the content ideas? 
Um, honestly, that's just me being a creative. Honestly, yeah. it's so random. That's, I kid that's, you not. that's your intuition. And I call yeah. it my divine downloads. Yeah, like if you are yeah. still and listen to your inner voice, that yeah. still small voice, you'll get yeah. it. Yeah. That's just me. And like you said, when you're a writer and you're creative, like I've written four books, published four, self-published four books. Wow. I'm just, I just have that overactive creative mind. And I think just by me taking in so much content, I love, I'm a nerd. Like people, like you said, people look at me from the outside and they may not see that, but I'm a big nerd. I learn, I could be watching reality TV and I'm pulling out the content from the TV show, right? The important content, whether it's business or anything, that's how my brain works. So if I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see something or Instagram, if I don't screenshot it, I'm usually remembering that quote or something. If I'm on a conversation with you, Deborah, you said many things that might spark interest on my next video, right? That's mm-hmm. how I create most of my content is through conversations, experiences, or what I see on a day to day. Oh my God, you're so fascinating. I could literally do another hour with you. Isn't she amazing? Oh, I love you. oh my God. I look, we're out of time and I have like 25,000 more questions. Well, can I invite you back? Of course. I will okay, great. You. <laughs> you know, this is going to, um, now I regret not doing this on video because it would have gone viral on YouTube. Oh, well, next time. Um, we'll do it. We'll do it. But I just want to see, is there anything that's coming up that we can support you with? Because I believe in the power of synergy. Anything is possible. Anything that you want us to share or support? You know what? You guys just follow. I just love the support with my video content and what I'm putting out. If I can help you out in any way, reach out to me, DM me, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Dupe Alleru, D-U-P-E-A-L-E-R-U. Um, and if you think that I'll be a great speaker at an event that you yeah, know of, or if you can connect with me to anybody, or if you would like for me to speak at your event, I would love to. And so I'm an educator at heart. I, I just like to help other people achieve success, whether it's in their life, business, or career. So if I can do anything to help you guys out, I mean, let me know. I'm here. Oh my God. When I followed you on Instagram, it says, if you like Dupe, you might also like Joel Stein. What? Stop. That's awesome. No, somebody follow, somebody followed me. And then it said, you may also like JLo. I almost died. I was like, oh what? Gosh, that is crazy. Well, cause I have keyword Latina in my bio. That's why I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Just followed you. I'm so happy. We're like, finally kind of, oh my gosh. You know, one of my other girls, Nikita. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. It's a small, 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 small world. Wait, Deborah, so, are you going to BBWR, the Black Business Women's Rock, next weekend? I maybe. I don't know. I spoke at one of their events a, a while ago, but I, I'm not speaking at this one, but I should still go. If you're going, I'm going. I'm moderating both days. So I'm oh. moderating. Yeah. So I'm Friday, I'm moderating like a panel. And then Saturday, I'll be moderating two, two panels too. So definitely go because that would be amazing for us to connect. Okay. Yes. Yes. I I would love to. I would love to. And thank you so much. And thank all of you. Wasn't she good? I told you. I told you that this was going to be an amazing podcast and it was even more amazing. I mean, you have inspired me so much. I'm like, thank you. notes. All right. So make sure that you spread the word because part of this podcast is to create synergy, is for you to share this on your social media, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. Um, If you listen to SoundCloud, get it out there because what would the world be like if everyone was a messenger for their message? What would it be like if everyone that is an expert in their field was able to have a platform and a podium to be able to share that expertise to make the world a better place? That's what this podcast is about. And that's what I hope that you've caught from all of the wonderful speakers. So please share it. Sharing is caring. And go to iTunes. Give it a five-star rating so we can pop it to the top. And if you want to go even deeper to be a paid speaker now, feel free to join Join us in the Be a Paid Speaker Now Academy. We have an online course, which has a 70-page Bible of everything that I've learned over the last 16 years. There's 12 videos, including four videos on social media marketing for speakers that you could do at your own pace, along with a mastermind where you could get group coaching from moi and amazing experts to synergize with and have accountability to get that sizzle reel, to get that website site to create your social media content so you can be like Dupe Alaru and you could be keynote speaker on the circuit because why? 
I believe you are the messenger for the message and you deserve it. So go to beapaidspeakernow.com for more information. And thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. So I will see you in the next episode. And remember, with the power of synergy, anything is possible. Ciao. Thank you for tuning in to the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. If you love the show, feel free to share it with friends. I believe sharing is caring. And when you write us a great review, your karma points will be adding up. And I'd like to give you something. If you love the show, you can download a free copy of my latest webinar, How to Get Paid, Five Steps to Be a Paid Speaker. You can download it at debradaris.com, D-E-B-O-R-A-H-D-E-R-A-S.com slash speak now. Remember, you are the messenger for the message. And with the power of synergy, anything is possible.